Yo, so I wanted to present a theory about Mikola, a theory that is based in fact, like all good theories are. But like any theory, we're still going to have to speculate a bit to try to complete it because we don't have all the pieces to the puzzle. And this theory is that Mikola is seeking a new source of power, and I believe that power is the sun. We already know that Mikola has seeked other sources of power before because Mikola written in the Radigan's Rings of Light incantation, we know that he left Golden Order fundamentalism behind, which is what he and Radigan used to use to be able to make a lot of different incantations in the game. Mikola left Golden Order fundamentalism behind eventually because he found that it could not cure Melania's accursed rot, and quote, this was the beginning of unalloyed gold. However, we found that unalloyed gold also could not cure Melania's rot. We found this out from Gowry, of all people, if you follow the Millicent quest. It says, quote, The rotting sickness that afflicts Millicent has no cure. When the Erdtree tree flourished, even the demigods could not stave off its effects, despite their nigh godhood. But Millicent's suffering can be ameliorated. For this, you are to find a certain needle. End quote. So we know that this is able to stave off the effects of the Scarlet Rot, but it does not actually cure the Scarlet Rot. In fact, all that Melania had to do in order to make the Scarlet Rot cause her to bloom again during her fight with Radon was to simply break the needle in one way or another. That's why we see a giant rot bloom where a battle clearly took place, because we also find the broken needle at that very spot. And there seems like there might actually be a way to boost the power level of this needle, but it can only be done in one way. Seemingly, Gowry and a lot of players don't necessarily know about this, even though you've probably done it yourself before. If you go into Placid Dusak's boss room, you can use the golden needle in this room to actually cure yourself of the frenzied flames effect, because this can ward off the power of an outer god and it can only be done for whatever reason in this room and in this room it is the closest to the sun we can ever get in the entire game think about it Baramazula is the high up in the sky zone that does not seem to be affected by the Erd tree all that much it also doesn't seem to be affected by the moons all that much it's quite literally the brightest place in the entire game and Placid Dusak's boss room has been placed in a way that it is kind of like outside time and space not affected seemingly by the outer gods or the just whatever gods might be in power at the time so this seems like a place of purity in a way like a place of pure gold a place of pure sunshine not affected by the effects of other outer gods and such like that and this idea works on theme with unalloyed gold, because unalloyed gold is essentially pure gold. It is unaffected by other alloys. It isn't tainted by other things. And this is probably why this works in this room, where this room is unaffected, seemingly, by all of the other outer gods. Because it is a place outside of time and space, thanks to the effects that Placid Dusex has put upon this boss room. After all, Placidusax is the first Elden Lord. This dude lived at a time that may have not even had an Erd tree anywhere near it, during a time when there were less gods fighting amongst each other, or at least they may have been different gods fighting amongst each other. A time when the sun was likely more prevalent and present in the world than it is right now. And we'll go touch on that a little bit more because, you know, we have noticed that the sun is present in the world, but it seems to be blocked out at times by things like the Erd tree, by things like the moon. There's a lot of other competition in the sky right now. But during the times of Placidusax, that probably was not the case. In fact, the Erd tree was not well received at first. The Erd tree and the gods that represented it had to essentially brute force their way across the lands between and force their will upon the people. It was only after they literally forced their way into power 
that they were accepted because they weren't actually accepted. They're just the winners of that war. But now we're starting to get a little bit off topic. So let's get back to Mikola and the sun. And we know that Mikola was trying to use the sun in order to give Godwin a true death. We not only find out about this through the golden epitaph, but we find a lot of evidence for this at Castle Sol, which has evidence for this all over the place. In fact, Sol is another word for the sun in other languages. Mikola was trying to do this through the power of an eclipse event. And yes, Berserk fans, this probably would have looked a lot like the eclipse event where Griffith ascended to godhood. You know, just like, you know, Mikola's trying to ascend to godhood. But we'll get to that in just a moment. And so, obviously, we have some proof here for the power of the sun because he was trying to literally use the power of the sun to bring Godwin a true death. That quite literally shows that the sun is in some way, shape, or form a power source of some kind. A power source that seems to have been lost to time, with all of these other entities such as the two moons and the Erd tree around blocking the sky out and making the sun less relevant. It seems like this is something from long, long ago. But Mikola is a very learned person, and he knows a lot about things that occurred long, long ago. In fact, in the DLC trailer, he speaks on times that occurred before his life probably ever even began. I mean, we don't have proof that Mikola wasn't born before the events of this DLC trailer that you are seeing right now, but it is likely that he was birthed after. Regardless, Mikola is aware of a time long, long before when things were much different in the lands between and the sun was probably a lot more prevalent. And let's get into that. So we already know for a fact that at least some of this theory is true because, I mean, it's already there. Mikola was quite literally trying to seek out the power of the sun through an eclipse event to try to bring his brother a true death. At least in some way, we know this to be true. So let's try to act like Mikola here and using item descriptions and pieces of information from the game, let's try to seek the power of the sun and then eventually keep digging until we start to connect this with the DLC. And I have a feeling you guys are going to really like some of the imagery and things that I have found here. Now, I firstly wanted to point out that the sun is a rather pure power source. Many people would look at the sun's golden rays. And yes, that is a reference to Godric's death scene where he says that they will return one day bathed in rays of gold. And that might tie into something we're about to look at in just a second. But the point I'm trying to make here is, is that the sun is seen as a rather pure source. In fact, it's mostly made up of hydrogen. It is technically made up of other things like helium and a small amount of oxygen and a, like 0.5% of some other elements. But it is a rather pure power source and is often represented as a pure golden source. Now that's more of a metaphorical thing and less of a literal thing, so let's move on to some other stuff that may tie into this. The warming stone item description. It said that the Erd tree was once as warm as the gentle sun and would gradually heal all who bathed in its rays. Now yes, that's another tie into Godric's death scene where he states that they will return bathed in rays of gold. Uh, now, there's a lot of theories as to why he said they rather than he or I, but that's a story for another day. I basically am trying to state here that this bathed in its rays statement here could be referring to the Erd tree, but it could also be referring to the sun. It may even be referring to both because the sun did exist before the Erd tree. And when we look at certain imagery from the DLC trailer that we got recently, You'll notice there are rays of gold heavily prevalent in this particular scene with what we assume to be Merica. And many of us feel like she's probably ascending to godhood in this moment. And I, I kind of agree with that here. There's a lot of imagery here. Berserk fans are probably going wild looking at this thing. But this is also probably when the Erd tree was likely made. That's what a lot of us are theorizing as well. Whether that's the case or not is yet to be seen, but where is she facing during this? She's facing directly at the sun as she does this, almost as if using it for its power, as if the sun is a form of power 
that existed before all of these other entities sort of took hold over the sky above. The sun seems very, very powerful back in the earlier stages of this game's lore, and it does not seem as powerful anymore, which in my eyes might be why Godwin is not able to be brought back through an eclipse event because the eclipse event can't happen. They tried at Castle Soul, but they never saw an eclipse. The reason why they might not be able to see an eclipse is because the moon is acting differently than it used to, because the Erd Tree is also blocking out the sky and taking up its own rays. If there even was an eclipse out there in the sky, you might not be able to see it properly because of all of these other entities that exist in the world right now. So I'm theorizing that in the DLC, it's likely that Mikola might be trying to maybe even eliminate some of these other sources and bring back the sun in a way that is meaningful to potentially bring Godwin back or maybe just bring him a true death. It seems to me that Mikola seeks out the power of the sun in its purest and most potent form. And that might be what we're going to be doing in this DLC. We'll just have to wait and see. Now let's take a look at a very, very fun item description here. This is the Sun Realm Shield, and there is so much going on with this, and yet it says so little, but there are so many secrets to this. Shield of Honor, depicting a city crowned by the sun. It has seen better days, much like the wear upon the shield. The seat of the sun is long faded away. This, to me, proves that the sun used to be a lot more prevalent and cared for by the people of this world. But that belief and that care is long faded away, much like the wear on the shield. And if you look at the shield, there's a castle depicted on this shield that is crowned by the sun. But we don't have a castle like that in the base game. People thought maybe it's Castle Soul, you know, Soul maybe means sun and maybe that's what's going on but this shield does not look like it's not depicting castle soul it's a completely different castle the castle that looks the most like this is actually shown to us in the dlc so i think that the sun realm is what this location used to be called and now it is called the land of shadow i think that merica in the dlc trailer long ago when you know these these a lot of these events sort of began i think that she ascended to godhood and some events took place and she eventually laid a veil over the sun realm and maybe even you know put up an erd tree that also blocked out the sun which seems kind of like a little bit messed up because it seems like she may have even been using the power of the sun long ago before she started this thing with the Erd Tree and eventually created the Golden Order and eventually was using Golden Order fundamentalism and sort of abandoned the sun for whatever reason. I can't wait to find out what those reasons are in the DLC, regardless of whether this theory is right, because I understand that many of you might think this is just a crackpot theory, but I've been sitting on this theory for nearly two years now, and I never made the video because I don't know. I just I just never did. That's not important though. So I could be talking about this theory literally all day. How it connects with Mikola, how the DLC might be all about Mikola trying to revert the world back to a place where it used to be, where the sun is more prevalent, how Merica in this one particular scene seems to be ascending to godhood, and how there's literally berserk references literally all over the place, how the sky to the right is one color, to the sky to the left is one color, and seemingly in the center it's almost like they're in an instance that isn't even a part of the real world where the sun is shining through brilliantly and Merica is staring directly at the sun. I could be here all day, man. And once you start going down this rabbit hole, you start to dive deep into like 700 different other theories that really, really open up the lore. Once you get down here, man, it really opens things up. But the DLC is about to drop literally tomorrow for PC players, so I figure I should leave it here for now. If I haven't convinced you of potentially some of the validity of this theory by now, I think I probably won't, even if I go on all day about it. So, if you found any of this interesting, consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be making a ton of Elden Ring content once the game drops, mostly how-tos, like how to get to certain areas early, how to get to certain weapons and locations and items, etc, etc. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the Land of Shadow. Or, better yet, the Sun Realm. Peace out.